Hello everyone. Salva and I are excited to talk to you about a paper on the association between oxytocin injections given before birth and risk of stillbirth and neonatal deaths. Few years ago, we conducted a trial in North India for evaluation of a strategy to enhance infant survival. In a population of 1 million, we followed almost 80,000 pregnant women till birth and thereafter their live-born infants. There were nearly 1,500 stillbirths and almost 2,600 neonatal deaths and we performed verbal autopsies to ascertain the cause of death. I remember a conversation with Frederick Freund, perinatal epidemiologist, one of the co-authors, who was astonished by seeing how many women reported being given injections to increase their labor pains, even among those who delivered at home. We did a quick literature search and found that in many developing countries, volus oxytocin sick injections were given to initiate or augment labor, and these seem to be associated with stillbirth, birth asphyxia, and neonatal deaths. Using a nested case control design, we set out to exploit our data to estimate such an association. Our almost 2100 cases were intrapartum stillbirths and day one deaths, and our 500 plus controls were also neonates who died, but after having survived their first week. Our exposure was when the mother reported being given an injection to initiate or increase her labor pains. More than two-thirds of our women received antenatal oxytocic injections and their association with stillbirth and day one death was strong with an odds ratio 1.7. Such injections can lead to excessive uterine contractions and compromised fetal blood supply, so it is noteworthy that this association evaporated when we in a mediation analysis adjusted for science of asphyxia. We estimated the population attributable risk to be 31%, suggesting that in India alone, more than 100,000 stillbirths and day one deaths can be averted every year if oxytocics are used appropriately. Our study has a few limitations. Our controls were neonates who died after one week of life, rather than those who survived. We don't expect this proxy sampling strategy to have biased our findings though, because oxytocics are not known to increase the risk of death beyond the first few days of life. Further, it's possible that mothers of neonates who died early would better recollect injections given during labor than those whose babies survived. However, the proxy sampling approach could actually have reduced such information bias. Our study shows that oxytocics were commonly injected before the baby was born and that they substantially increased the risk of intrapartum stillbirth and day one death. This is a concern in India as well as in many other developing countries. We believe urgent action so that healthcare providers adhere to accepted guidelines can substantially reduce the risk of stillbirth and enhance neonatal health and survival. If you want to know more about the study, please read our paper, which will be published in September. Thank you.